Congress is gearing up to confirm Trump's intended nominees and appointees as the left tries to sabotage his picks. And as Bill just reported, talks of recess appointments have been heard all over Washington. Here's what Speaker Mike Johnson had to say about it. I believe in the principle of a new president being able to choose his team. I am very hopeful, very hopeful that the Senate will do its job, and that is provide its advice and consent and, and move these nominees along. They, they have an, an obligation to do a vetting of every, uh, every nominee, and they will, and we'll see how this plays out. But I think all the hyperbole and, and everything on the front end here is uh, to distract the American people and to try to stall President Trump uh, in delivering upon that mandate again that the people have given him. So, so far, Trump has chosen at least three sitting members of Congress to serve in his administration. Matt Gates also vacated his seat after the president-elect named him as his pick for attorney general. There are still four states with uncalled House races. How would all this impact the confirmation process? And for that, we're going to begin with Sean Duffy. Sean, um, what are you watching here? So first off, in the House, uh, Donald Trump was smart to take people that, that, are, that are loyalists, that uh, buy into America first, um, that he think are going to go in and be disruptors. I mean, you get, if you put in the same people in your cabinet, you'll get the same results. He's bringing in a different group of people who think differently, um, that want to change the course of the country, focused on the American people, not the special interests that so often drive Washington. Um, I, I, it's going to be interesting, this confirmation conversation. Um, and again, I think the senators, most of them, have committed to making sure that Donald Trump, with a mandate, the popular vote from the American people, um, he gets his cabinet in place. Uh, the question will be, do they hold on to the promise that was made before the Senate elections and actually allow that recess appointment? Um, we will see. Here's the problem, though. There's going to be a couple seat majority probably in the House. And if you know the House, uh, it's... it's it's hard to manage it, right? You have people that are really conservative and you have people that are really moderate. And a lot of these new Republican members are going to have won their seats by the skin of their teeth. That's not Donald Trump's problem, but that's going to be Mike Johnson's problem. Can I get a very thin majority and make sure everyone stays on the agenda of America first and transform the way this government works? I think Mike can. And with the help of Donald Trump pushing them, uh, I think this is, this is going to revolutionize the way our government works. Yeah, and Tom, I mean, this is what happens when you have someone in office or about to be in office who's trying to get so much done so quickly and show the American people that he's getting to work. 20 plus selections already. Yeah, and I like these selections, and it looks it, it looks very MAGA. But you know, now he's already been president, so he knows people. He didn't know anyone back in 2016. He was an outsider; he wasn't a politician. So he went to some advisors, and they said, "I'll oh, put this guy in." He's an old. So there were a lot of kind of old guard people that he put in. So now he's got the new guard in. I I don't know why some of these people can't. You know, at least Stefanik. I love her, right? She's great. I don't know why she doesn't keep her seat. There's plenty of people unemployed that he could appoint to his cabinet. I don't know why he's taking all these people out of their house seats. To what's she doing? She's going to be the ambassador to the U.N.? That's an easy job. She should be able to do that while she's a... Why can't she do it, Sean? Why can't she be Listen, a congresswoman <laughs> and also be ambassador of the U.N., which is I'm, like, hi-ho, pay your bills? It's a, it's a problem, Tom. You can't have two jobs at once. But listen, he trusts her, right? And he wants her in that position. Um, and she's been loyal to him. And I think that truly, that truly matters to him. And you made the good point. Now, I know we're going to go on the table. But... Um, when he came in in, in 17, you're right, he, didn't know, he put Rex Tillerson in at the State Department, and he didn't know Rex. He did it on, uh, on recommendation, yeah. right? Now he's bringing in people that he knows, that he has relationships with, that will help him accomplish the goals. He's not bringing in people that uh, someone recommends that he's never heard of well, before. And we're also talking about deep red seats, too. I mean, even Elise Stefanik in New York, she won her race by 25 points, both Waltz and Gates in Florida won their seats by over 30 points. So we're talking about deep red states where Republicans should hold on onto those in special elections. I, I will say, look, the, the House is less relevant in the nomination process outside of recess appointments, because obviously you would need Spike, Speaker Mike Johnson to be on board for that. Today he broke some news on Fox News Sunday where he signaled that he was open to recess appointments. He also called Matt Gates one of the brightest minds in Washington, D.C. And of course, he's probably the hardest one for, for Donald Trump to get through. So then the question really comes down to what does John Thune do, right? The newly uh, minted majority leader in the Senate, because he has some trouble spots in his Senate. He's got Mitch McConnell to keep an eye out. He's got uh, Susan Collins in Maine, who's running for reelection. He has Lisa Murkowski as well. Tom Tillis is resigning. So how does he end up being, you know, so, 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 uh, so basically, so it really is going to come down to how John Thune steers his Senate. And also, does he end up getting on board with recess appointments for some of these uh, more difficult nominees to get through? So a, a lot to watch. Um, but I think Donald Trump should get a lot of deference 
in getting these nominees through. The mandate, this election, was for him. The only reason we have the House and the Senate is because of Donald Trump. Um, so I think he should be able to get his people can, through. Can, can well, one quick guess on why, why, why Matt Gates at the Department of Justice? I don't think Donald Trump thinks that anyone is strong enough and smart enough to go in there and change that institution, the, the very institution that went after him, that went into his wife's bedroom and went through her private drawers. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. He's the only guy that he thinks can do it, and he deserves that, to go, this should be changed. It shouldn't be political anymore. He thinks Matt Gates can do it. Well, Americans want disruption. They, they voted for Donald Trump. That's right. <laughs> well, and as all this is happening, establishment Democrats are facing a reckoning. Axios reports House Democrats are, quote, sick of Nancy Pelosi and want new leadership as the left loses both chambers of Congress. We're also hearing Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer begging for bipartisanship. To my Republican colleagues, I offer a word of caution in good faith. Take care not to misread, misread the will of the people and do not abandon the need for bipartisanship. After winning an election, the temptation may be to go to the extreme. We've seen that happen over the decades, and it's consistently backfired on the party in power. The current balance of power in the Senate stands at Republicans with 53 seats and Democrats with 47 seats. That would also explain why Democratic incumbent Senator Bob Casey is refusing to accept his loss to Republican Dave McCormick in Pennsylvania. As we reported yesterday, Democrats in the state are even counting illegal ballots there to help him. As Americans watch, Tom. Yeah, well, look, I'm not surprised at any of this. And I think, you know, Nancy Pelosi, they're, they're starting to talk about, oh, maybe Nancy should go now. I love it. How sweet it is. She's the one who stuck the knife in the back of Joe Biden. Now they're coming for her. She's old and shaky, too. And she didn't do her job. I mean, they lost big. This was a big win for Republicans. And so they should go seeking a reckoning and they should say, Nancy, your time has come. Bye. Well, Sean knows this, but, you know, anytime a party loses like this, they do the soul searching exercise of trying to figure out, you know, why did we lose? Uh, but Chuck Schumer is the height of hypocrisy for him to try to talk about bipartisanship. You know, Byron York in The Washington Examiner has a great article. Schumer to Republicans, please don't do to us what we were going to do to you. And he talks about how Chuck Schumer during the DNC was talking about getting rid of the um, legislative filibuster and thinking that Democrats were going to win this election cycle. So it's a little rich coming from uh, old Chuck Schumer there. To, to your point, it's kind of like the French Revolution. The revolutionaries who are calling for someone's head, all of a sudden, they're on the chopping block. That's what's happened to Nancy yep. Pelosi. I was going to say that, but I was afraid to, I can't pronounce Robespierre. <laughs> <laughs> Nor can I thank you Wait, for it. Like the great but but I, it is, this is a really good point because, again, they were talking about the filibuster, getting rid of it. Uh, they pushed through the Inflation Reduction Act. So they're asking the Republicans to not do to them what they did to the Republicans. Um, but again, I think this is an opportunity. These don't come along very often to have the majority in both houses, both chambers and they have the presidency. There's so much work to roll back all of the bad stuff that Joe Biden did uh, to put this country on a new course. Um, you have to take the opportunity and you have to do it. Um, and I think uh, the Senate's not going to fall for the now bipartisanship coming oh, yeah. from Chuck <laughs> yeah. Schumer. I'm not going to buy that one, Chuck. Sorry. <laughs> We're not buying what you're selling. <laughs> hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.